Utah is set to take on Arizona State this Friday. That's right. It's a Big 12 showdown on a Friday night. Those games can tend to get a little bit crazy. So we're going to see Cam Rising or Isaac Wilson. Is Arizona State going to be able to pull off an upset against the team that come into the season we thought was the team to beat in the Big 12? That's what we're breaking down on today's Locked On Utes and Locked On Sun Devils crossover. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes and Locked On Sun Devils your first listen every single day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network and available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. If this is your first time tuning into either of our shows, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media where you can follow both of our shows on X as well as our own personal handles. Today's episode of Locked On Utes and Locked On Sun Devils is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined by the host of Locked On Sun Devils, Richie Bradshaw, for a game that is, no matter what happens, going to be far different than what we saw last year, Richie. And that's really quick where I want to start. Last year, 55-3. to three. What has changed about this Arizona State team since then that they've gone on to beat an SEC team? I know Kansas isn't great, but that's still one of the teams that coming into the Big 12 everyone thought was going to be good. Like, this team is rolling right now. One loss to Texas Tech aside. Same thing to Utah. They've had some good moments. One loss to Arizona. But for spring, particularly Arizona State, what has changed about Kenny Dillingham's program and culture that has allowed them to be a team that, you know, started the year being picked towards the bottom of the Big 12 and now look like they're capable of knocking off anyone? First of all, I appreciate you giving us our flowers. I feel like there's a lot of people that still aren't quite ready to get there. And I mean, I'm still a little hesitant too, but I know there's a lot of people that still just absolutely hate on ASU. So I can tell you that my listeners and everything will definitely appreciate that. We appreciate you guys. (laughs) With that being said, one of the things that I have consistently said about ASU on my podcast, and I know my listeners are going to go, he's going to say it, he's going to say it. They have learned how to win compared to last year. This was a football team that, in the close games, didn't know how to close them out, and the blowout games couldn't find a way to get themselves back into it. This year, they have proven that they can play from behind, they can maintain leads, they can they can do whatever they need to do in terms of adjustments to make sure that if a team starts crawling back into a game, that they can keep that door closed. Going up against Utah, 55-3 to last year, there was a lot that went wrong for ASU last season. One of the biggest things was injuries. ASU was on their third string quarterback who got knocked out of the game. ASU had to go to their fourth string quarterback in that game. He got obliterated. The offensive line was a big issue. And one of the biggest storylines going into Salt Lake City last year was our left tackle to start the year, Isaiah Glass, decided to quit on the team. Didn't enter the transfer portal. Just said, hey, I'm done playing for the year. He did that on a Tuesday. The Tuesday before the game. And As ASU was flying out to Salt Lake City, Kenny Dillingham goes up to true freshman Sean Na'a, a guard, and he goes, hey, man, you're playing left tackle this week. That's Jonah Ellis. Good luck. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) yeah, that was tough. And then ASU just had injuries everywhere, and they just weren't as talented last year. And he went up against a team that was just so good. Utah's been so good for several years now. I didn't like going into that game. Did I see 55-3? to No but I definitely thought you were going to get crushed in that game coming into this year. I think, I think ASU was always going to lose this game and spoiler alert. I still don't think they're going to win, but I think that it's going to be a closer game this time around with the way that ASU is playing, Uh, not even the way Utah is playing. I just think ASU is playing at a level this year where they should be able to go toe to toe with a lot of teams Having this at home on a Friday night, it's going to be a blackout for the jerseys and the fans. We just had a sold-out game for the first time in years. I imagine you can probably do the same on Friday night. Yeah, it's so different. This team, this is not going to be a blowout. Even there's a world where I guess Utah could win by 20. I don't feel like that's likely. I think this is going to be close, and one of the reasons that is, we still don't know about Cam Rising. So this whole media cycle and just 
uh, in some ways, even a circus, I'll say, of what Kyle Whittingham has continued to do with the Cam Rising Injury Saga. Added another chapter when Kyle Whittingham went on ESPN 700, a local radio station that calls the Utah games in Salt Lake City, and he was talking about Cam Rising, said, we'll see what happens in terms of his availability for the game. Uh, Cam, we're hoping, I think it's looking encouraging, but I'm not going to say anything until we actually get to the game. And that right there, the very end of that, is why I am not going to predict Cam Rising is entering this game until we actually see him under center. We have done this way too many times over the past few years for me to confidently go oh this is when cam rising comes back compared to all the other times when he has not played so let's so at least for me and i assume you'll be the same we're gonna talk about this as if isaac wilson is the starter because that feels like the safest bet right now and honestly i'm curious what cam would look like if he did play because he has not played a full half yes he exited the southern utah game early just because they were up big but he has not played an entire half of football since january 2nd or 3rd whatever the rose bowl date was of 2023 that's crazy on ago in college football terms. So looking at this team with Isaac Wilson, I do think that Utah can still win this game with Isaac Wilson. When you look at Isaac, yes, he's turned the ball over, but he's made nice throws and overall has shown growth each week. There's a reason that Utah stalled in the red zone. He got them to the red zone with nice plays and throws. And then the failures that Utah had in the red zone don't just fall on Wilson, just like it wasn't on Wilson to get them in the red zone. This is a team that can move the ball. They have a, still have a win on the road at Oklahoma State, Win doesn't look as good anymore because of the struggles the Cowboys have had, but still not easy to win on the road in college football. But Wilson's a guy who's capable of making throws. If the game falls on his shoulders, that's where Utah could get in trouble. But you got a guy in Makai Bernard who going into the Arizona game was sixth in the nation in rushing yards. He's averaging 6.7 yards per carry. I like the way this Utah offensive line is playing. You factor that in with Dorian Singer and Brant Keithy, proven guys who can win on the outside and over the middle of the field. I feel like Utah has a chance to put some Boyd's points up against an Arizona state team that has allowed over 28 points in three straight games. Yes. And the defense is a really good unit. Defensive coordinator, Brian Ward is one of the most underappreciated coaches in all of the nation. They've been dealing with some injuries in the secondary and some of their young guys, Keith Abney and Javen Robinson, who weren't full-time players last year, Robinson transferred from Washington state have been forced to play 90% or more of the snaps this year because they just haven't been able to have the health to keep other guys out there. Corner is a thinner position for the team. The pass rush, it's it's good enough, I would tell you, but there's times where they just aren't able to finish plays. ASU also, for the first half of this game, will be missing their number one linebacker in Keyshawn Elliott and their number one defensive end in Clayton Smith because of two of the most questionable targeting penalties I have seen in the last several years. And they both happened in the second half against Kansas, so they will miss the first half against Utah. And that's that's huge because you could argue either one of them is the best player on defense. They are, at worst, two of the top five defensive players on this team. So ASU has been a little short-staffed on the defensive side of the ball this year. There's been there's been some great signs at times, and I will tell you that one of the things that I've always been really impressed with when it comes to ASU's defense is Brian Ward finds a way to make adjustments as well as any coach that I have seen at Arizona State. They will go from the Texas State game where they gave up 21 points in the first half. There was two wide open touchdowns in the end zone because the coverage just wasn't there. Start of the second half, Texas State goes right down the field, goes up to 28 points. They didn't do anything the rest of the game. Punts, three turnovers, turnover on downs. ASU was just able to dial in. They can make the adjustments. I have that trust in them. The problem is there's times where you need to win a game without making adjustments. You need to be able to get off to those starts, feel comfortable, and that you don't need to switch up everything. That's been one of the things that I've called out about this team previously is adjustments are awesome. I'm glad you can do them. I would prefer a game where you could stick to a game plan for 45 minutes or the entirety of the 60 minutes. They're doing a good job with adjustments. They are, they're, they're still prone to some mistakes. There's been injuries in the secondary. It's, it's short staffed right now. The, the run defense has been very, very good. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what happens without Keyshawn, uh, Keyshawn Elliott in the first half of this game. All in all, this is a good defense. This is another really good test for them because last week they made Jalen Daniels look like the Jalen Daniels that we all anticipated to see. 
They they allowed Taj Brooks against Texas Tech two weeks ago to look like the best running back in the country, which, surprise, Taj Brooks was very, very good. But the guys that are super explosive are typically able to take advantage of this defense. So for Arizona State, I, I just don't know if I'm ready to trust the defense to be able to completely shut down anybody and Utah's got more than enough weapons out there to to make to make things a little difficult. They do. We touched on it on both sides, but now we got to really dive into our keys on for the Utah offense, Arizona State defense and then flip it over as well. We're going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, I want to talk with you all about the sponsor of our crossover episode today. It's our great friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. There are so many features I love about Game Time. And how about the fact that it's not just sports tickets, but you can save on concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. They also have that all-in pricing, which shows the, t- the tagline up front so you know what kind of a total you're getting. There's no surprise fees at checkouts, and we know what a pain those can be. You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Their low price guarantee is also there, and they will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time ticket coverage is also the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So download the Game Time app and take the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can create an account. Use code Locked On College. It's capital L for locked, O for on, and C for college. Just the start of each word capitalized, but there is no spaces between those words for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, Richie, we kind of hinted at it a little bit, but really quick to put a bow on Utah's offense, Arizona State defense. The biggest key for me is don't let the game fall on Isaac Wilson's shoulders. Utah has to run the ball well in this game in order to keep that Arizona State offense, which has shown the ability to get explosive, get a little creative. Scadaboo is a really good player. So my biggest thing for Utah is run the ball. And I don't blame you for that. (laughs) This This is a team that is exploitable there's there's times where they have been run on this year there's times where they have been thrown on it's not a perfect defense i imagine that utah is going to find a way to get the best out of their offense one thing i do want to address because asu fans do the same thing with sam levitt isaac wilson was a four-star he was a very good quarterback when people go to criticize him The same way that people criticize Sam Levitt, I have the same thing to say every time. He is a freshman. He looks like a freshman. You need to give him grace. Not every freshman is Caleb Williams or Arch Manning or anyone like that. These guys need time to adjust. So, yeah, Isaac Wilson is going to make some bad throws and bad decisions. It's going to happen for a 17, 18, 19-year-old kid. The same thing for Sam Levitt. He's a redshirt freshman. He only appeared in four games last year for Michigan State before coming to Arizona State. He makes some mistakes. The the touch on his passes is off. Like He looks like a freshman. Give him some breaks. So when it comes to Isaac Wilson, the, the, the way that ASU has been able to make their offense work, and I think the best way that Utah can continue to go about things is to try and shrink what you're asking for him to do, leave it to be nice and comfortable, and then let the other strengths of your team be able to show up. ASU could be looking at this game, licking their chops about Isaac Wilson, and I would tell you not to because Isaac Wilson, who knows, maybe has a breakout game. Sam Levitt just threw four touchdowns last week. I don't think Kansas was ready for that. They probably weren't even game planning for it. You can't go into this game assuming that Isaac Wilson is going to be someone who holds back this offense because I don't think that's going to be the case if you play to your strengths. So the ASU defense needs to make sure that even a a freshman quarterback is someone that they're game planning for and understanding that who knows, maybe ASU shuts down the run game. And now Isaac Wilson is just going to tee off on your secondary. You still need to make sure that you're accounting for Wilson, regardless of him being a 28 year old quarterback or an 18 year old quarterback. So the, the defense just needs to remain humble is the way that I would go about this. Yep. 
I, I think you're right. And it's going to be a fun matchup to watch. And speaking of fun matchups, that's what it is on the other side as well. We were talking pre-show. Scadaboo is one of my favorite players in this conference. I love the variety of things that he is capable of doing. He's a guy who can play your wildcat quarterback. You can put him out wide if you need to, but of course, just a very effective receiver out of the backfield normally and a very strong runner does a good job of deciding, hey, when's a good time to keep this run inside versus bounces to the outside. Levitt's been impressive to start the season and you guys have done a good job. You've gotten in some shootouts recently and you've emerged victorious in most of them. Yep, fell against Texas Tech, but you but one against Kansas, one against Texas State. That feels like, that we mentioned games in the past, this Arizona State team probably doesn't find a way to win. No. Found a way to win them, and now you get a Utah defense in that is licking their wounds a little bit. The Utah defense is not getting up 25 points yet on the season, so they've been impressive in that regard, and they absolutely played well enough to win if the offense gave Utah something against Arizona, but they missed tackles. They allowed the Wildcats starting back to average over 10 yards per carry, and if you let this Arizona State team, who has both Scadaboo as well as Levitt are averaging over five yards per carry. You let them get their averages, Utah could be in trouble. But I do feel like Utah's had time to over the bye week. Hey, we had some because Karene Reed is and Karene Reed and Connor O'Toole. You talked about the linebacker and defensive end loss for you guys. Uh, those two players I mentioned, Connor O'Toole, maybe this team's best DN. It's close with him and Van Billinger. Karene Reed, maybe this team's best linebacker, him and Lander Barton, very comparable. They're might not play. They've missed time. We have no idea if they're coming back. Those will be losses. With that being said, Utah has now had time to kind of acclimate for those losses. This is a team that does well off of bye week. Morgan Scally is one of the best defensive coordinators in college football. The tackling issues that Utah had, I expect those to get shirt up. And I do feel good about this Utah secondary, even though I feel like Arizona State will make some plays downfield. This is a secondary that's got some ball hawks. If you continue to test them, they will get an interception and be able to swing the game. So I do expect this Utah defense, particularly a front seven that was a top five rush defense from a season ago, to bounce back and have a much stronger performance in Tempe than they did in Salt Lake City when they last took the field. That's going to have to be what ASU attacks too, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned for Isaac Wilson, it's it's very similar for Sam Levitt and the way that fans go about him as well. I have fans that will tell me Sam Levitt sucks and he's not good, and this, that, and the other. And it's like, he's a freshman. You got you to gotta give him that credit. But that also comes at, comes at the caveat that he is holding back the offense at times and coming off ASU's first bye week against Kansas. He definitely looks like he is working on some of his weaknesses. The touch on his throws is still kind of off. He's still working on establishing chemistry with some of his receivers. I know Jordan Tyson has been the most targeted receiver for this team by quite a lot. There there's a lot of missed opportunities. There's a lot of splash plays as well. The best way that ASU can win this game is the way that they've been winning it all year. And that's giving Cam Scadaboo the the football. I have dubbed him the people's running back because he catches it, he runs it, he passes it, he punts it. He does a little bit of everything, and he is everyone's favorite player in Tempe, Arizona. I've yet to meet someone who doesn't like Cam Scadaboo, and if they didn't, I just flat out wouldn't trust him. This is the guy that is going to win you football games this year, and it's been that way for. Four of the Sun Devils, four wins this year. They're four and one because they have had the consistency, the explosiveness, the determination, any other adjective you want to throw in there from Scadaboo. He he is going to be how this offense runs, no pun intended, in this game. ASU does have good depth in the backfield. They have Relique Brown back, who had a really serious hamstring injury that hampered him for the first four games of the year. He played last week. He looked good. The Carlos Brooks is another guy who's very talented. We'll see how much he gets on the field. It's it's a deep running back room for ASU. And Sam Levitt is a legitimate dual threat. He is mm -hmm. averaging right around five yards per carry. It would be even more if you took away the sack yards, which totally. I can't stand that. I can't stand thank that. Thank you. I was just about thing. to ask you how you dumb feel. Thing. It bothers the heck out of me. But neither here nor there. Sam Levitt is a legitimate dual threat who, when you take away the sack yards, is legitimately almost 10 yards a carry this year. He is insane as a runner. Matching him with Scadaboo gives you a dynamic running game. If you can find a way to keep the passing attack competent, they have some weapons. They've got Jordan Tyson, who I mentioned is wide receiver one. Xavier Guillory is another stud receiver. Shema Mateer has been a pretty good tight end, even though you only see one of the two catches from him. Bottom line, 
this needs to be an offense a, against a, a very good Utah team who, even if they're quote unquote slumping right now, is still one of the best teams in the conference and still one of the heavyweights to win the Big 12. Not much has changed. This is still a really good football team. But if ASU is going to win, they need to play their strengths. They don't need to try and reinvent the wheel. So, no, I don't want Sam Levitt having five or six deep shots in this game. I would prefer halfback dives or stretches with Scadaboo. Just do not overthink it. There's been times ASU has done that this year. And then as soon as they go back to what they, they're good at, they're like, oh, why didn't we do this before? I don't know why you didn't do it before. That's what they need to do for 60 minutes in this game against Utah, or it could get ugly. Really quick, we're going to get to more Utah, Arizona State stuff. It's so ridiculous that the people who stack college football can't tell the difference. And no, I bet it's not that they can. It's just whatever the rules are between when a court, like taking the sack yardage away from a quarterback and deciphering that out at the end of a game because it drastically hurts a rushing QB. When you look and you're like, oh, he only, have, he only has this many yards. It's like, well, it's completely unrealistic to what he actually does because you're taking the sack yards. So that's something that I, I can't stand. We'll take that up with the, the college football. Hey, you know, college football, the NCAA, they're doing. They're dealing with they'll they're dealing with a lot of things the NCA right now. So we'll let them uh, we'll let them sort all that out. Hopefully, eventually they can uh, they can get to this though too. But we got to talk about a couple keys for the Utah defense versus Arizona State offense, and of course, predict the winner still. So that's what we'll be diving into in one moment. But first, we can talk a little bit about FanDuel because FanDuel lets you get in on the NFL action. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Got the MLB playoffs, of course. Also got NFL. But you have our game you can take a look at right now. Utah currently favored by six and a half in this one. Richie, where are you leaning on that line over under six and a half i it, it just depends as we'll talk about in a little bit on the quarterback factor if we are under the assumption isaac wilson is playing i think asu can cover six and a half that's a lot i think asu can cover that yeah, asu absolutely can regardless of who plays i am going to pick utah to do to cover themselves and they'll and, and you score. should over at six and a half, it's, it's going to be close. I, I definitely think that once this will not be a blowout, but I do feel like Utah has the matchups to be able to cover it. However, you guys are leaning though. Once again, head over to FanDuel and get started with that $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com today. All right, really quick before we dive into our predictions, biggest key for Utah's defense to me is to what you talked about, Richie put Sam Levitt in consistent third and long situations. This is really simple. Your best player is still Scadaboo. I do not want to let him get going. I want to limit him on the ground. I want to pack the box, and I want to consistently make Sam Levitt make NFL throws. Arizona beat Utah because of Noah Fafita making NFL throws late in that game. Late in that game. That's why, in many ways, I tip my hat to what Fafita was able to do. I think if Utah asks Sam Levitt to repeatedly make those same type of throws, that's where they're set. Utah is putting themselves in a position to get an interception. So to me, contain Scadaboo, make Sam Levitt beat you. If he does, tip of the cap to that to the redshirt freshman for the things he's able to do. But I do feel like that is more than likely a recipe success for Utah. What's your biggest key for this side of the ball? The biggest key is, and I've said this for a long time, you have to find a way to control the line of scrimmage. ASU's mm -hmm. offensive line has underachieved this year, and it's really unfortunate because it's a talented unit, and it's light years ahead of where they were last year. But you've seen teams that don't respect Levitt as a passer, so they will stack the line of scrimmage. There's seven guys. There's sometimes eight guys. That's how bold they are about making sure that Cam can't run the football. And I, I understand eight on five is a pretty big disadvantage for the offensive line, even when it's only four guys rushing, there are times that ASU's offensive line just hasn't been able to dominate the way that we kind of hope they were going into this year. And if you were going to beat Utah, we already said you need to be able to run the ball with Cam Scadaboo. That's the same for every game. It's even more imperative against a, a heavyweight in the Big 12. If you cannot find a way to run the football. First of all, don't abandon it. No matter what, there, there's there been games where Cam has averaged under three yards per carry and you were still able to pull out the win. You can't get away from him no matter what. But 
what I want to see out of Sam Levitt. I hate when they force him to take a deep shot because the touch just isn't there. What I love is when they get him in the intermediate game, attacking the middle of the field, especially, and just delivering some strikes. So if you get into those third and long situations, I don't want you 20 yards down the field. I want you between eight to 12 yards down the field. Even if it's behind, if it's behind the sticks, Levitt throws a good enough football that it gets there. There's some good zip on it. And as long as the receiver is in a position to pull it in, because again, the touch isn't always there. They have a chance to be able to convert some third and longs. It's just going to be incredibly difficult. If Scadaboo is a borderline non-factor in this game, do not immediately panic and start throwing the ball 15 plus yards down the field. That's not how you're going to win this game. You need to play to Levitt's strengths. Levitt's strengths right now in the passing game is the in, the intermediate part of the field. Perfect. Sounds great. I'll take those five-yard catches. I'll take those seven, eight-yard catches with the run-after catch ability that these receivers have to be able to pick up the first downs that way. But bottom line, just, just don't force the deep ball, man. It's not there yet. It's fine. You can get through the rest of the year without it, try and address it next year. Run the football and pass the ball to the middle of the field. I, I think that's the best way ASU could win this game. So let's talk about it. It's time to predict who is going to win this game. I'll start out first with how I think this game is going to play out. Utah has been pretty good on opening drives this season. Andy Ludwig and his scripted plays usually works well. I think the fact that I would be even more nervous about Utah's offense, I would say, if they didn't have the bye week to, I feel like, fix what I look at in very correctable mistakes against Arizona, the red zone execution, the play calling, some of the things they're tailoring in an offense to, once again, expect this to be Isaac Wilson, tailor it to the things that Isaac Wilson does well. Expect Utah to score early, but I do not think Utah will jump out to some massive lead. I think they will maintain a league throughout this game, but Arizona State will consistently be right there. Levitt, Scadaboo, they will make some big plays. They're good players. That's going to happen. But I do think late there's going to be a mistake and a turnover by the Sun Devils in this game. I do think that Utah's ability to run the ball will reign supreme, and that is why I'm going to take Utah 31-24 to over Arizona State. This is a game, I, I, I said this previously, going into the year, I would have tattooed that this was a loss. Not in pencil, not in pen. This was definitively a loss no matter what happened. ASU is 4-1. and one. They're playing really good football. They are very competitive. This is still a loss for ASU. I do want to mention, just because I told you I wanted to throw it out there, if Cam Rising plays, you're winning by at least 17. Like, I just, ASU was not ready for that caliber of quarterback. If Isaac Wilson plays, I think you can find a way to keep it close. We mentioned during our FanDuel ad read, which again, that's the number one sports book in America. It's our best friends. That's who I use. So if you're not using FanDuel, then I mean, you're just in the wrong place, man. With no offense to the other places, FanDuel's the best. They got they got Utah six and a half. I think ASU can cover that pretty, pretty comfortably. I'm still taking Utah. Maybe it's subject to change. Maybe Friday on game day, I will be all about ASU. Maybe when I'm in the press box and I'm seeing everyone on the field, I will change my mind. This is going to be a close game. I'm going to agree with you 100%. I think Utah's going to get off to an early, an early lead. And I don't think that ASU will be able to take the lead, but I think they'll be able to keep it within six at all times. I got a low scoring game, 23-21 advantage Utah. I like it. I can definitely see it being low scoring with the way these defenses are playing. Really quick, Arizona State fans, something you absolutely understand. If you see Cam Rising throwing pregame, do not assume that he is going to play. He has done this for weeks now. We've got there. If we are getting closer to the start of the game and you notice that Utah's first team offense is out there and Cam Rising is under center, then you can start to feel a little bit like, okay, he might actually play. But if you just get in and he's warming up and throwing, do not think he's going to play. He is dressed out. Each of the last two games has gone through all of the warmups and has not played. So it is going to be a saga that we continue to monitor Cam Rising, if his availability. But this is going to be a fun game regardless, Richie. I'm really excited. It's weird it's on a Friday as it always is when you just think yes. about these games being on a Saturday. This game, wasn't this played on a Friday or set Thursday like two years ago, 2022? That sounds right. It might have 
that sounds right. I know 2021 was the year I was really upset about because that was the year ASU is going to waltz their way to a Pac-12 title. And then they were up at half and then Utah made their adjustments. That was not a fun yeah. game. I remember that <laughs> one very vividly. You know what else I remember was Brant Keithy actually got hurt in this game uh, two years ago as well. So I'm sure he's oh, excited. Oh, was that to, the game? Yeah. Yes, this was the game. So I'm sure he's excited to get back on the field and just see the progress he's made since that low point of an injury as well. But this is going to be a fun one. We are going to continue to preview and talk about it. We each be coming out with a prediction show on Friday. But Richie, always great. Our third year doing a crossover with uh, with these. Even though the Pac-12 is gone, I'm glad we can still keep this going, my friend. I, I am too, JT. And I know a lot of ASU fans think Utah is a big rival. I, I can I can get there, I guess. I really don't hate Utah, even though people I think I hate Utah because when my uh, Big 12 media preseason stuff came out, uh, which is gone, you can't find it anymore because I'm, I'm <laughs> done taking the stuff. Utah fans were all over me. And I, I understand. I just promise you I'm not a Utah hater. I love Kyle Whittingham. He's one of the three best coaches in college football. I will die on that hill. But that that's all. I just I'm not a hater. I don't consider you guys a rival, not because I don't respect you, but because I do respect you. Yeah, so I, I mean, I respect you guys as well. I don't to me, this rot this does not have the recent chapters in terms of on the field back and forth to make it a rivalry. It just hasn't been a lot of these games haven't been close. So I would love for this to become a rivalry again. I think there's always some fun entry because of the two Pac-12 schools, but I don't think it's a rivalry either. I always I've Really like Kenny Dillingham. I like a lot of things about Arizona State. So this is going to be a fun game. We can't wait to watch it get underway. Thank you again for listening to Locked On Utes and Locked On Sun Devils. We'll be back with you tomorrow with another episode.